Air Venture 2023, uh, Dave Schlenker, uh, Schlenk Air. We got Kenny Mines. Good to meet yeah, you. Good to meet you, Dave. And uh, we've got the uh, turbine powered moose. Can you tell us about That's it? Right. She's a beast, beast of the backcountry. Uh, we put a PT6 20 on the moose and uh, called the turbine moose. It's got 550 shaft horsepower. It's making like almost 2,500 pounds of thrust. So it's just incredible performance. It's getting off the ground in 150 feet. Uh, empty and 300 feet fully loaded, climbing out at 3,000 feet a minute and cruises at altitude at 200 miles per hour. So that's pretty good on big old 29 inch Thunder tires. And a plane I would actually fit in. Yes, that's, uh, tons of room in the Moose. I, uh, I try on planes, therefore I'm a fan of the Murphy Moose. If you saw the last video, if you haven't seen it, the one uh, Chad's uh, video with the uh, LS3 and the uh, Murphy Moose on floats. You want to check that one out. So, but this is uh, this is amazing. I mean, how, so how much fuel do you carry? It carries 100 gallons, and we average 25 gallons to 30 gallons per hour, depending on your altitude and how fast you want to go. Okay. Very but we're cool. not working the engine hard at all. The engine really most of the time is at 50% power or even less. Wow. So we now make this engine last a very long time. Where are the uh, engines coming out of? They're not new, are they? No, these are mid-time Dash 20 engines that we're getting that have lots of life left in them. And uh, because we're able to buy them that way, we're actually able to offer this package for a very reasonable price as far as the turbine world is con concerned, right? Right, right. A brand new turbine engine, $700,000 like this, we're doing the whole firewall forward package, including the propeller for $250,000. Wow. So that, uh, that's a lot of plane for the money then. It is, and you know, you can't, for reliability and low maintenance, you just can't beat a turbine engine. Um, you know, people tell me, what do you gotta do? Well, all you gotta do is kick the tires, light the fire and go. I mean, it's got a two minute warm up time and you're ready for takeoff. You know, you can't shock cool it. Uh, it rarely needs oil. It's just so low maintenance and so reliable. They're just fantastic engines. I've been sitting behind them for for 31 years flying crop dusters and, and somewhere around 17,000 hours and I've just never had one fail me yet, so. Awesome, awesome. So did you build the plane or was it uh, previously constructed? I, I bought the airplane, it still needed to be finished. It, it had a few things to finish. It had the M14 engine on it when I got it. And the radial engine is a lot of fun and they sure sound cool, but they're also a lot of maintenance and they make a mess and they slobber oil all over the place. and. You know, they burn half a quart of oil per hour. And just being a turbine guy for so many years, um, I really wanted to put a turbine on this. And my my wife's like, she drove it harder than I did. She's like, you gotta do it. She wanted the reliability, especially going into the backcountry of Idaho and flying over mountains. Very cool, very cool. And uh, there was talk of uh, you might be putting floats on it? Yes, this is gonna get a set of floats very soon. We've already got the floats. Uh, we've already got the plumbing installed. I just gotta do it. <laughs> nice, nice. And we're gonna try to fly this if we can make our schedules line up, uh, yes. getting out of Air Venture. And uh, we flew here at Cessna's mass arrival and we're not far away, so hopefully we can meet up and uh, yeah. set up some cameras and uh, show the folks what, what she flies like. And I'm, I'm excited about that for sure. That's nuts. <laughs> Did I just climb into a helicopter? <laughs> Rocket ship. Wow. I'm at 93. Wow. Holy cow, I don't even know if we can show the angle. I mean, that's like... Can't see over the nose, can't see anything. <laughs> I have never climbed like that in anything. You see on the uh, shoreline over there on that lake? Yeah. That's a Cessna 150 uh, on a pole. It's a windsock at my buddy's restaurant. Oh. He's got a seaplane base there at his restaurant. Oh, that's cool. Meisters on Cedar Lake. When you get floats on this thing, we'll take her back there. Hey, that sounds great. I'll see you all the traffic. Turbine moves, three-shirt tango. Flying straight in, two-eight. And uh, we'll be landing the sod in 
stopping well short of four. So with the turbine, of course, it got reverse. Reverse happens when you pull it up past the gate and you get into beta mode with the throttle. This red lever is your condition lever. That actually controls the turbine speed for flight idle, whether you're ground idle or flight idle. Flight idle is set slightly higher to keep the engine spooled up so that reverse is readily available because the engine's already spooled if you need it. So we try to run flight idle on final. But if you want to come down faster, you can actually slow that down. You can pull that back, and that will cause the airplane to have a higher sink rate. Gotcha. So how long uh, how long did the conversion take once you bought this with the M14 on it? Well, I had lots of great help. Uh, our crew at, at the shop, we've got some aeronautical engineers, and so once we laid out a plan and dove into it, it took four months from start to finish. We wow. did it pretty fast. That's fast. Yeah, and uh, a lot of R&D, you know. It was, the biggest challenge was the cowling. We really wanted this finished fit on this airplane and we wanted it to look like this belonged on a moose. We didn't want it to look like it came off of some other airplane and it was cobbled and I didn't want any bumps in the cowling. I wanted a real clean fit and so that got taken off and put back on several times before we got that right. Wow, I can't, it's unbelievable how smooth this is. I mean, it's just... Yeah, it is just butter smooth. There's no vibration. You know, the M14 radial engine was trying to rattle the whole airframe apart. You got a back massage every time you flew the airplane, but this this conversion that you're doing, Kenny, can it be put on uh, other airplanes? Yes, it can. Uh, we've had guys ask us to do that already. We're considering uh, aircraft like the Bush, uh, the, uh, Bush Liner, which is an incredible airplane uh, that's coming out. It's got long range tanks similar to a 185. Uh, pretty much a copycat, but uh, with some great upgrades to it. And uh, that could be a really good candidate. The Bearhawk 5 is also another one that, that we're considering. The Bearhawk doesn't have the fuel capacity, though, so it would not be as conducive as the Bush Liner. Uh, but it's also definitely on our radar. That's cool. I, uh, I fly 185s on straight floats in a float club that I'm in, and... Uh... I can't imagine having a PT-6 on that platform, uh, you know, experimental 185 with a, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, it would be, <laughs> it would be incredible on that airplane. It would, the performance would be phenomenal. Man, this flies. I want one. Yeah. <laughs> I think actually the longer nose made it even more stable than when it had the radial engine on it. And uh, just, you know, what amazed me the most about my guys the, uh, they got the engine angle right. You have to offset a turbine engine especially. It has a tremendous amount of torque. And if you don't get that offset right, you'll either run out of rudder or, you know, it's not going to fly straight, right? And so uh, what's amazed me is I, I don't need as much rudder as I did with the radial engine, even though I have way more torque because we, we got that dialed in. We got the thrust angles right. And it'll climb with very little rudder as well. So it's very controllable in the crosswind. It flies itself. You can fly it hands off. It's an incredibly stable airplane. Turbine throttle quadrant is, is totally different than a gas motor. Right. No, it looks foreign to me. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it takes a little bit of training to learn how to operate a turbine. Man, it's so easy once you get it down. They're easier to start than a fuel-injected engine. And, uh, you know, the throttle... Uh, response is so easy. We don't have to lean. We don't have to worry about heat. The, 
a hot day really doesn't bother a turbine too much as long as you keep your oil cool, and that typically is never a problem. Um, you know, and cold weather starts are also very, very simple in the turbine. We have a, a beautiful engine display in here, and you can tell I've got it throttled the way back right now to 30% torque. We're getting our fuel light because we're down to 27 gallons of fuel left. So we've got that set to start blinking at us just to give us a little reminder that we should be getting close to our destination before too long. Which, get, which we get are. Some more fuel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so no, we're, we're close enough to the airport, so whenever... But, whenever uh, this is an Electronics International display. It works extremely well. It does a lot of different things. It keeps track of fuel. Um, it also keeps track of our cycle counts. It also monitors our air induction, so that if our air filters become iced up, you'll get a yellow light, and that means it's time to open the auxiliary air on the engine, and now it'll draw in air from inside the cowling, and, and that way you've got an alternate air and you never have a flame out. Gotcha. Well, it also keeps track of all your starts and your start cycles. You can see all our start cycles and takeoffs are right here. On a turbine, you keep track of how many times you've taken off and also how many times you've shut off and started the engine. So yeah. a, take, a start up, a takeoff, a landing, and a shutdown is one cycle. Okay. And there's there's cycle limited parts inside of a turbine engine, and but the, you get you get like 25,000 cycles out of a brand new part. It lasts a long time. Yeah, it's pretty generous then. Yeah, we can also monitor this engine through the G3X Garmin displays. Let's do that that flight demo thing real quick and show on your phone film that acceleration. Hold on. I'll get it slowed down first. And then we probably ought to head back. Okay. All right, we're bringing it back, bringing it back. I'm pulling back on the stick. I'm pulling back. I'm all the way to the stop now with both hands. Pin to the stop, and here's the stall. There is none. <laughs> we're just thinking. No stun. That's yeah, there just isn't any. And I can still roll the aircraft. Now, when you're this slow, you got to use more rudder. Right. Use your feet. But, you know, it's totally controllable. This plane is so controllable even in the stall configuration. I want to show how fast this thing accelerates. So if you focus on the airspeed, and we're not going to lose any more altitude, and I'm just going to gun it. We're going to power right out of the stall. Boom, right back up to 160 miles an hour. Just that fast. That it is, is crazy. Well, so fast that we just went over my house. <laughs> <laughs> we missed Dave's house. Yeah, well, we can slow it down quick, too. We just pull it back. And look at that baby slow down. Wow. You just put on the brakes. You can't shock cool it. You don't have to worry about it. So the airspeed control you have with a turbine engine is phenomenal. You know, I can come down at, at 2,000 feet a minute and never get going faster than about 125 indicated. That is just crazy cool. So you got a prop, NP is your prop RPM. And what we show on this display is ITT, that's your internal turbine temperature. And, and that's one thing we watch very closely. We don't ever want to over temp the engine. Uh, this is our torque indication. That's really telling us how much power we're making. And the NP is your prop. So that's our prop RPM. NG is how fast the compressor section is spinning. And, there, and that is given in a percentage, so is torque. Your compressor section runs separate from the power section. That's why they call the PT-6 a split spool turbine engine. And it's a fantastic design. They start cooler than a connected turbine engine does. How long have you been flying turbines then, Kenny? I've been flying turbines for 27 years. <laughs> wow. 17,000 hours in crop dusters. And uh, most of that's turbine engine time. That is, uh, that's some skillful flying there. Yeah, but what an exciting way to make a living. <laughs> yeah. It's the most fun you can have in commercial aviation and not get thrown in jail. Right. But we're going to land that way. What is that? That would in be the grass. Uh, one zero in the grass. OCL traffic, turbine moves three, Sierra Tango, right base for one zero in the grass. So you can goose a turbine in on short final. But there is a little bit of throttle lag, and you just, it's just something that you get used to. I'm not even using the brakes much. 
Uh, when I land, that's mostly propeller, reverse thrust. Yeah, uh, you can definitely feel the uh, stopping force. Yeah, it works great. The nice thing is, as soon as you touch down, you get in a beta and, and pull it back, and you're done, because it just sucks all the air off the wings, and it's not going to bounce, it's not going to float, it's not going to come back up again. Wow. Hey, that works better than I thought it would. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> that was amazing. Wow, well, I can't thank you enough, Kenny. That was uh, that was an experience. That was a great flight. Thanks, Dave, for coming along. Wow. Awesome. Experiencing the beast. Experiencing the beast. You That's got for you. sure. Unbelievable.